हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू के बीज वर्ल्ड माय नेम इज किरण एंड आई एम हियर टू डिस्कस अबाउट द लीगल टॉपिक द टॉपिक इज प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट लेट्स सी व्हाट इज मीन बाय करप्शन इन शॉर्ट इट इज नथिंग बट द एक्ट of bribery or misuse of public position whenever the matter of money or a public position occurs there is a corruption may occurs and you know the friends india is among top 3 most corrupted nations corruption means public position ki misuse karna rishwat lena इसे हम सादी और सरल भाषा में करप्शन कह सकते हैं लेट्स सी अबाउट द हिस्ट्री ऑफ दिस एक्ट करप्शन एक्ट 1977, 1988, सॉरी बिफोर द इंडिपेंडेंट इरा द करप्शन केसेस वॉज ट्रायल ऑन बेसिस ऑफ आईपीसी, एंड देन इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट enacted a name was prevention of corruption act 1947 after that the some um, amendment is there was the amendment was there and the prevention of corruption act 1988 is enacted there are also some other anti corruption laws like right of right to information act 2005 prevention of money laundering act let's see the definition regarding this act section 2 says public servant before the public servant we discuss about the public duty public duty public duty means duty in the discharge of which the state public or the community has an interest at large the public servant means a person in the service or pay of the government or remunerated by the government by fees or commission for the performance of any public duty is called public servant let's see some case laws of this <clears throat> minister is a public servant mla mp is a public servant there is a time limitation that's why we discuss only one case here in 1979 m karunanidhi versus union of india all india report 1979 supreme court <clears throat> 898 it is a very famous case of m karunanidhi m karunanidhi was a former chief minister of the state of tamil nadu at that time in this case minister is a public servant and various actor involved in this case then the next special thing in this act is appointing special judges to trial the corruption cases the central and the state government are empowered to appoint special judges by placing a notification in the official gazette there are two very famous cases of this special judges indira narayan ganguly versus state of west bengal in 1997 and the jay lalita versus j j lalita versus union of india all india report 1999 supreme court 1912 you can see these cases on websites there are power given to the special judges as the special judges appointing for the trial of the corruption cases there also that's why there also a power is given to the special judges let's see that a special judge may take cognizance of offense without the accused being committed to him for trial tender bread on to ob- to obtain evidence crp provisions will apply to proceedings before special judges a special judge while trying an offence published under this act shall exercise all the powers and functions 
accessible by a district judge under the Criminal Law Amendment Ordinance 1944. There are various sections are there. Here is a time limit. That's why we can't discuss that much more. You can get the this PPD on our website. You can download it and read it. Let's see some important section in this act. Section 7 says that a public servant or a person expecting to be a public servant renders himself guilty of an offence under Section 7 of the P PC Act, that is Prevention of Corruption Act 1988, if he accept or obtain a, to, or agree to accept or attempt to obtain from some person a gratification. If such gratification is not a legal remuneration due to him, if he accepts such gratification as a motive or a reward, doing or a forbearing to do an official act or showing or forbearing to show favor or disfavor to someone in the exercise of his official functions. Section 8 and 9 is regard is regarding for the prevention of corruption act correspondent to repeal section 162 and 163 of the indian penal code under section 8 and 9 of the prevention of corruption act 1988 it is an offense for a person to accept by gratification as a motive or a reward for improperly influencing a public servant by corrupt or illegal means or by the exercise of personal influence. Section 10 corresponds to repeal section 164 of IPC. Prescribes punishment for offence under above two sections as imprisonment for not less than six months which may extend to five years and fine. Section 11 corresponds to repeal section 165 of Indian Penal Code. A person agree or obtaining valuable thing without consideration which is inadequate from any person who is concerned with the business by public servant or any such person subordinate to him shall be punishable with imprisonment of not less than six months and not more than five years with fine section 12 correspond to the repealed section 165a of ipc under this section the offering of a bribe or a valuable thing to a public servant without consideration for an adequate inadequate consideration is an offence by itself and not merely an offence of amendments. There is also criminal misconduct. The offence specified under clause A and B of section 13 clause 1 of the Prevention of Corruption Act 1988 have the some ingredients as those specified in Section 7 and Section 11 of the Act, but there exists some difference. Section 13, subsection 1, clause C corresponds to Section 5, section, subsection 1, clause C of the repealed Prevention of Corruption Act 1947, Section 13, clause 1, subclause D. This clause corresponds to section 5, subsection 10, clause D of the repealed Prevention of Corruption Act 1947. Section 13, 1, section 13, clause 1, subclause E correspond to section 5, clause 1, subclause E of the repealed Prevention of Corruption Act 1947. Section 17, persons authorized to investigate. Section 18, power to inspect banker's book. Section 20, Clause 1, Presumption where public servant accept gratification other than legal remuneration. Section 20, Subclause 2, A similar presumption is to be made against the accused charged under Section 12 of the Act. Section 20, Clause 3, Expection, Exceptions of such presumptions. Section 21, Accused person to be a competent witness. As we know, everything has some loopholes, disadvantage. Let's see the loopholes in Prevention of Corruption Act 1988. It is not applicable to private sector, where the private sector has a lot of corruption involved. 
there is a delay in prosecuting and the term corruption remains undefined creating confusion in the prevention of corruption act 1988 there is no given provision regarding the definition of corruption and also there is no provision regarding confiscation of proceeds from bribery to overcome the some loopholes of the prevention of corruption act the new act is enacted in 2013 and the name of act is lokpal and lokayukt act 2013 the act at a glance let's see about the act establishment of lokpal lokpal is at the center member of members and are not more than 8 chairperson and members are from judicial and non and non judicials appointed by president recommendation by selection committee selection committee is there for the recommendation of the lokpal and the members of the lokpal term is for 5 years or attaining of 70 years whichever is earlier means the term of lokpal and the members are 5 years but the members are enacted there the members are appointed there are of not more than 70 years old there may there is given salary or allowances for the lokpal and lokayukt and the members there is the provisions let's see one by one inquiry wing for offence under prevention of corruption act prosecuting wing for complaint under lokpal act jurisdiction of lokpal prime minister all minister of parliament group a or b officers group c or d officers power of lokpal let's see about the power of lokpal supervisory power section 25 gives about the supervisory power of lokpal let's see about the supervisory powers powers of superintendents directions to delhi special police establishment and the section 25 gives the supervisory powers central intelligence commission sends report to lokpal no officer or a body in charge should be transferable may appoint advocates other than government advocates also section 26 gives the special powers of search and seizure if lokpal believes any document secreted it may search and force seizure of such document it will be in custody of a person or authorized body till the end of proceedings lokpal to have powers of civil courts under cpc 1908 summoning examining oath receiving evidence and affidavits examination of witnesses etc given in section 27 section 28 having provisions regarding utilized service of central and the state officers for conducting preliminary inquiry lokpal may utilize the services of central or the state officers the person or agency whose services are utilized are subjected to directions by lokpal section 29 says about the provisional attachment of assets if lokpal believes that any person is in possession of proceeds of corruption or such person accused of corruption then such proceeds are concealed transferred or confiscated ordered to attach the property and forward the copy to special court in 19 days order will case after expiry of said period Section 30 says about the confirmation of attachment of assets. Lokpal directs prosecution wing to file applications within 13 days. Special court if convenes then makes an order for confirming attachment of property till the end of proceeding. Public servant if acquitted given compensation and benefits if not property goes to central government. Section 44 says about the declaration of assets within 30 days of oath or entering into office he is to submit declaration of asset whose benefits are shared by him his spouse and his 
डिपेंडेंट चिल्ड्रन टू बी फिल्ड विद इन थर्टी फर्स्ट जुलाई अथॉरिटी पब्लिश द सम ऑन द वेबसाइट बाय थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑगस्ट सेक्शन फोर्टी फाइव से इफ यू फेल्स टू डू सो और गिव मिसलीडिंग इंफॉर्मेशन एस इट्स प्रिज्यूम टू बी एक्वायर्ड बाय कोर्ट मीन्स If any person making false or frivolous complaints under this act get maximum 1 year imprisonment and fine up to 1 lakh rupees this is given in section 46 of lokpal and lokayukt act let talk about the efficiency of this body consisting of 50% of sc st or obc this defines logic as questions of merit and ability should always be beyond caste and religion lines clean and accountably in governance thank you thank you for listening me i hope you get the point and clear the concept so friends we will meet in the next video with more content and more knowledge friends give us a feedback like and share and also do comment your opinion questions and also suggestions for the best one keep in touch with us and please subscribe our channel thank you thank you very much bye